fashion, night clothes. Steve Strange was all the rage a few years back. Then it all went wrong. Here he is with Shane Ritchie at the bar to tell us what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Steve Strange. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Right. Now, just because I, know, I was talking earlier, when I found out you were coming on this show, I was a bit excited because I was a big fan of you in your early days. Because I remember you, before Bowie, because I was a bit too young for Bowie, from Bowie, a gentleman to wear makeup and frilly shirts That's and right. dresses and nice little boots. <laughs> and, were... <laughs> so, and also, you're a pioneer of that sort of new romantic wave music. That's, that's what, what, well, that's what the papers called it, the new yeah. romantics. What did you call it? Um, I don't know, actually. It was just a, um, a phase which I grew up with, you know, something the way I was the clothes I was into when I grew up, and then it sort of materialised into music. Yeah. What was your fondest memories of uh, them time in the charts? Um, I suppose, like, coming up from Wales, never been on a plane before, mm -hmm. moving to London, and then sort of having number one all over the world, and then sort of flying on planes to Germany, to mm -hmm. France. It was great. I mean, it was really good fun. But with your chart success came the opening of nightclubs. Yeah. around London. How did you get involved in that then? Um, well, we started off with a club called The Blitz, which was... Um, I was too young to get in that <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, that was, was the, that was one of the clubs that we started, first of all, and then that's how Visage started as a band. And then um, all the sort of big money men came in because then we got back in to do the Camden Palace, which was, um, so, I mean, like a big club, whereas, you know, it wasn't just... 200 people coming into the night. It was like 1,500 people every night, and we yeah. were doing it six nights a week. And you were riding the crest of a wave. Everything was going well for you. But then, tragically, around about 1986? About 86, yeah. Things I mean, went a bit wrong for you. What happened? A management company, you know, coming in thinking that we, well, we did, you know, we did really, the group did very well. The clubs were doing really well. And a manager came in, and then one day I wanted to sell my shares in the Camden Palace mm -hmm. to find out that I didn't own them and I didn't home, own my house in Wales. I mean, when you're sort of 18, you sign contracts which you sort of know nothing about. And I turned to drugs, which mm. unfortunately is not a way out at all. But at the time, I did seem to think it was sort of solving my problems, but all it was doing was pushing the, the problems further and further aside. Mm. And drugs is not a way out at all, but I mean, Luckily now, that's all in the past. I mean, I can't turn the clock round, but it's in the past. And, um, you know, things are starting to happen was again for me. Was you, like, broke when you were on heroin? Um, well, or were you still financially well off? I was... I mean, my, my heroin habit was maybe £120 a day. God, and that's seven days a week. And um, if I wasn't broke, it s certainly soon went. Mm. So then I went in 86 to sort of to Europe and started, um, I was, did some work with Roger Taylor from Queen and he was one of the people that helped me sort of get my career back on and the And also there was a, a lot of other showbiz pals from yeah. the music that rallied around, for instance? Um, well, Sade was somebody that was really supportive that mm. sort of one day sort of handed me a packet and she could see that I was really going downhill in a bad way. Mm. And she, it was one, she said, don't open it till I go and then I opened it and sort of found there was a thousand pounds in there. Right. for me to be able to go into a clinic. And then after the clinic, I went to Ibiza and started doing clubs in Europe. And after Europe, um, my three years of my management was over then, so I could come back to this country and work. And Roger Taylor from Queen rallied around, and we did the opening night of, which is my new club on Monday nights, at the Hippodrome. I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> have I got to wear mascara to get in or anything? Like? <laughs> no, it's not. But it's you totally kicked the habit now, though, mate. Yes, I and have. And the future recording career? Um, I'm, I'm writing for p various people at the moment. Yeah. Um, I've just been offered a new contract, but I'm, I'm going to see what's happening. I'm not jumping straight in at that. I'm taking it very yeah. quietly at the moment. But clubs, um, that's on a Monday night, which is called Dream Age. Mm. And we're doing various other sort of clubs yeah. in Europe as well. Which well, we could do with someone like you back in the charts, mate. I'm sure they agree with me. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Strange. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Terry. Eh? A welcome return here, Steve Strange. And our next.